Hello, welcome to our lesson on multiplying integers. We're going to play some cards today and learn about multiplying positive and negative numbers. Let's do it. What you can expect today is that we're going to have a short lesson with some practice and a word problem. Uh, very similar, we've had this type of lesson before, so let's do it. Integers are positive and ne negative numbers. Here are some examples of integers, just a few, so that we can get the basic idea of what we're going to be working with. When we're multiplying integers, it can basically be summed up in a game. So I'm going to play some cards, not face cards, but number cards, and the goal is to get the most number of points possible. So if I have this one, three times five, the five is my card, that would be the same as getting three times that five card, right? So that's handed out to you and you get three times the five value. That's a great thing, right? You just gained 15 points. So that's fantastic. Three times five, 15, perfect, right? Multiplication is repeat adding. So three times five is the same as five plus five plus five. And we can see that in this example. Now, what happens when we throw some negatives in there. What if you got two times the negative three card? Well, that would mean you had two negative three cards or a negative three and a negative three. And that's bad because you just gained negative six points. You don't want to gain negative points, right? Gaining negative points is not cool. So what we've just done is gained some negative points. And you can see in these two examples that it's pretty straightforward when the first number is positive. Two negative points or what's the other one? Three positive cards. It, it all makes sense. Now we have to change the rules or add a slight rule to talk about what to do when you have a negative first number. So the negative on that first number is instead of gaining the card, we are losing the card. So we do have two positive three cards, but because of that negative, we're actually losing those cards. So inside your hand, you have to find th um, two positive three cards and you give them away or you lose those cards. So you just lost six points. So that's a bad thing, right? That's negative six. Now I want us to focus for just a minute here on these two examples before we move on. The last two examples showed the same exact thing. It said losing six points or gaining negative six points is the same. Those are the two examples, right? We had two times negative three and negative two times positive three. And both of them ended up giving us the same thing. We ended up losing six points. Whether we were giving away three positive points or whether we were gaining um, some negative cards, both cases were losing in the end. So we have negative. I hope that example helps to make sense there. And we have to understand those concepts of gaining and losing and negative points for this next example to make sense. Because this is the one where we go kind of crazy. And it's sometimes hard to show an example where you can actually see this in an application. So here it is, negative three times negative four. So remember, three times negative four would be three negative four cards. However, that negative out front says that we are losing those negative cards. So I'm gonna filter through my deck and I'm gonna find some negative four point cards and I'm going to give them away or trash them, you know, put them in the discard pile. I'm losing those ones. So that's actually losing negative 12 points. So I want you to think about that. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? If you have a deck of cards and you've got all these cards, positive and negative, and you get to trash four, uh, 12 negative points, you get rid of 12 negative points, you lose 12 negative points. What does that mean? Well, that's a positive. 
to your overall point scoring, right? You're getting rid of negative cards. If you were playing Dominion, you'd be, you'd be trashing curse cards, right? This getting rid of negatives is a positive. And that's kind of a concept that's a little bit um, challenging to understand. I hope that example was was sort of helpful for us. And I want you to maybe write this down or remember it, put this down somewhere because it will never change. A negative times a negative will give you a positive every single time. In our example, we just did negative three times negative four gives us positive 12. It's a rule. It will always happen. That's the way it is. Great. Now it's time for some practice using a word problem. I'm going to combine those two things together. We're going to practice using a word problem. I want you to think about this question. Here we go. At night, it drops two degrees per hour for eight hours in a row. If it started at 50 degrees, how many degrees did it drop? And the bonus question, what temperature is it now? So we're going to take a look at that. I want you to pause the video and try this one out on your own. Try thinking about what this means in terms of positive and negative numbers. Write it out and, and be, be ready to explain because I'm definitely going to be listening for your explanation. All right, go for it. Welcome back. Now explain your reasoning. I'm just kidding. I can't really check that. So you're going to have to check with someone around you or see if your reasoning is the same as what my reasoning was. Let's take a look. What I said is that it drops two degrees per hour for eight hours. So that's dropping two degrees is negative two for eight hours. So I multiplied those negative two degrees for eight hours, negative two times eight. You could have also done um, repeat adding where you did negative two plus negative two plus negative two plus negative two and done that eight times. You could have done that. But because this is a lesson on multiplying, hopefully you did use multiplication. You recognize that dropping two degrees per hour for eight hours is negative two times eight. You could have also written this as eight times negative two, and that would also be correct. Both ways, you'll get the final answer of negative 16. Then you can say, the temperature dropped 16 degrees. That is the answer to the first question. How many degrees did it drop? Notice we didn't use to answer the question. We don't have to worry about when, where the temperature started to answer the first question. How many degrees did it drop? It dropped 16 degrees. Went down by two, down by two, down by two, eight times. It's going to drop 16 degrees. Now, to answer the bonus question, because we love our extra credit, we're definitely going to need to know that it started at 50 degrees. So this is the way I would set that one up. I would say 50 degrees plus negative 16. Now, if you want to do it a little bit easier, you could also say 50 minus 16, or you could convert, start at the first one and convert it over to the other one. Um, you're starting at 50 degrees and you're losing 16 degrees or dropping 16 degrees. Either way, your answer is going to be that your final temperature is 34 degrees. So that's a little bit of real life practice. Temperature is definitely a place where you see these positive and negative numbers. You can get an opportunity to practice with them. Also, game playing, if you're collecting points in your hand, would be a great example as well. So hopefully those two examples were helpful. A couple of things to remember. Number one, gaining a negative is the same as losing a positive. And also, losing a negative is a plus. Losing a negative is a plus. That was a little play on words there because plus is sometimes used for addition. Anyway, but losing a, positive, losing a negative, I'm sorry, is a positive thing. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.